right, Jim. Yes, here in Nashville, second round action in the Southeast. We'll begin the day with the Wake Forest Demon Deacons, and they are the number five seeds against the Hawkeyes of Iowa. Out of the Big Ten, seeded at number four. And later from here, we will have the top seed in the Southeast, the Wildcats of Kentucky, against number eight, Utah. everyone, I'm Jim Ryan here on the campus of Vanderbilt University Memorial Gymnasium for the second round action here from Nashville. You know, number four seeded Iowa has now gone 10 and 5 since the tragic death of their star forward Chris Street back on January 19th. And while Coach Tom Davis declined to use his memory as a motivating factor for his team, the players themselves have said they want to do well for their very popular and much loved teammate Chris Street. And so here they are in the second round taking on Wake Forest in what should be a very good matchup. I am joined by our Hall of Fame basketball player and new mom, Ann Myers. And, and uh, this matchup today figures to be different from the first round in that you've got two teams that are pretty physical, but maybe an edge in size and power going to Wake Forest. Well, you do, especially the forward positions with Rodney Rogers and Trelawney Owens. They are so big, 6'7 and 6'8. And I talked to Tom Davis before the game, and he was saying we're probably not only going man to man, but have to switch up into the zone because we can't match up in that forward position. Iowa, of course, does have the tallest man on the court, and a pretty good one in AC Earl. Well, AC Earl is going to be a key for Iowa as far as where he gets the ball on the block. And that, in essence, defensively for Wake Forest, is going to be a key to try and push him out of position. Two good backcourts. Is there an edge for either team? Well, Childress is the main backcourt guy for Wake Forest to try and get his three point shot off along with Val Barnes. All right, let's take a look at the starting lineups here today. And you can see that Iowa, with Rogers and Owens up front, the muscle there that Ann referred to, Hicks in the middle, pretty good size. Should be a pretty good matchup for Earl. And it's Childress and Harrison in the backcourt. Winters and Lookingville with A.C. Earl at center. Smith and Barnes in the backcourt. The word this morning from Iowa that one of their outstanding substitutes, Jim Bartles, a sophomore from Freedom, Wisconsin, is out with the flu, and he is joined uh, in uh, that situation by another reserve player, Kevin Skillett. Coach Dave Odom of Wake Forest, now with a record of 20 and 8 on the season, his fourth year at Wake. The at-large entry that lost to Virginia in the first round of the ACC tournament has his team back on track. A victory over Tennessee, Chattanooga, 81 to 58 in the first round. Tom Davis of Iowa, his team beat Northeast Louisiana in the first round here in Nashville, 82 to 69. They now have a record of 23 and 8 in like. Wake Forest, an at-large entry. They are, of course, out of the ACC, out of the, the Big Ten. And the officials are Scott Cornley from Pocatello, Idaho, Richie Ballesteros from San Francisco, and Bobby Vetketter from Gun Barrel, Texas. You know, you talk about Jim Bartles and Kevin Skillett being out of the game. Both those players average 11, 12 minutes a game, and Bartles averages 16 minutes, 16 points and 7 rebounds. Tom Davis likes to use a lot of substitutes wear the other team down, so that could be a key as far as those two players being out. No doubt. As we said, uh, Bartles uh, was a key performer in the first round game. Kevin Skillett did not appear in that game, but as uh, you mentioned, he does normally get a lot of minutes. Wake Forest is in their goal today, and Iowa in white, defending to our right. Kevin Smith, number 10, Val Barnes, number 20, the backcourt for the Hawkeyes. Wake Forest in that 2-3 zone. You can see they're really packing things in, not letting A.C. Earl get that ball. Looking, Bill. Hits for three to start the game. Wade Lookingville, the man who replaced Chris Street in the starting lineup of the Hawkeyes with one of his best friends on the team and felt obviously in somewhat of a strange position earning that spot as he did, but he has played well of course, since about, coming in. There are about three or four other guys that felt that Chris Street was their best friend too. That's right. Very popular player on this team. First foul of the game will go to Earl. Make it Winters. Winters picks up the foul. James Winters. James Winters, they call him Skywalker on this team, has great leaping ability. We talked about Winters and looking build only 6'5 and really not as physical as like a Trelawney Owens or a Rodney Rogers. Winters indeed was Chris Street's 
roommate. They live together on the campus, near the campus of the University of Iowa. Junior from Joliet. Owens makes the first. See Dave Odom with his glasses on. Very superstitious. He, when he gets a winning streak going and he's got his contacts on, he'll keep those contacts on. But he won the other night with his glasses and he's wearing them again. <laughs> Jelani Owens had 22 points against Tennessee Chattanooga in round one. And Coach Odom says that he has uh, been their best player the last several weeks. The women's scores, 81 to 65 Colorado advancing. Stanford, number one seed in their region advanced, as did Western Kentucky along with the men's team, of course. Good zone by Wake Forest, so really sagging in again. AC really having a tough time getting the ball where he wants it. The perimeter players really have to take concern as far as trying to get their shot off. There he got the ball inside and trying to go back outside. Nobody was there. The defense by Wake Forest is not real, real aggressive. And so Iowa just has to take their time and look for the open pass. 3-2 Iowa lead, early going here in Nashville. Round two, the winner heads to the Sweet 16. Childress works his way to the top of the key. A good feed underneath. Rogers. Four-three Wake Forest lead. Barnes and Smith in the backcourt. Luckendale hits another three-pointer. His second. 6 for Iowa. Well, you have, you have to see as the game goes along whether Looking Bill is going to continue to hit that shot and see Wake Forest come out on him and whether Iowa can pass around the perimeter and get other players open. Childress changes the play in the half court, uses Hicks for his green, missing the three, rebound. Trelawney Owens. Four points for him. We are tied at six with 17.29 to go in the first half here at Nashville. This is second round action in the Southeast region. Tim Ryan with Ann Myers. And the first substitution of the game made by the Hawkeyes. It is Russ Millard, the freshman from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. He joins Kevin Smith, Val Barnes, well, AC Earl, and James Woodard. The six points for Iowa have all been from the outside. Wake Forest. I should say nine points now in the third three-pointer, but Wake Forest is really sagging in, taking away the inside game of A.C. Earl. And on the other hand, Wake Forest has been very patient on offense. They've gotten the ball inside on some of the penetration. Iowa started out in the zone, and now they switch up into a man. Val Barnes hitting that three-pointer, the senior from Wichita. 9-6 Iowa lead. Two tough teams from two tough conferences, and Hicks hits a jumper. That's a big bucket by Derek Hicks, 6'9", senior, because a lot of teams have given him that free throw shot, 15-footer, because he has not, in the last few games, been hitting his shot, and that's a big bucket as far as confidence-wise for him. Hicks averaging 5-5 five, five a game coming into the tournament. In the opener against Tennessee Chattanooga, he was most effective on the board with 16 rebounds. Turnover. Hicks controls to Childress, and Childress almost lost it to Winters. Iowa getting back on deep. Oh, not sure where they're setting up in a man or a zone. Harrison missed, but Rodney Rogers did not. 10-9, Wake. Iowa looks a little tentative. They're hitting their outside shots, which obviously is going to keep them in the game. There they miss one, but they're passing the ball a little bit slow on the perimeter. It'll be Wake Forest ball when we return 10 to 9. That remote switch, we've still got basketball for you. This is outside Memorial Gymnasium at Vanderbilt, where today Michigan State has just beaten Vandy 5 to 1 in the first of two. Let's play two. Well, inside, we're going to play two as well. And it is 10 9 Wake Forest leading Iowa. Iowa and white, Wake Forest and gold. Later here, it'll be Kentucky and Utah. Childress banks it. Wake Forest looks very patient.
pressure on that offense, breaking that half-court press by Iowa. They have not rushed any shots whatsoever. Nice pass inside. AC Earl got triple team, and Looking Bill was all by himself. Looking Bill off well here in the early going for Iowa. 15.09 to go, first half. 12 of them, Demon Deacon lead. Rogers outside, and now feeds it off to Childress, and they'll set up the half court. Rogers going down deep. Tempo has been very slow for both teams. Just kind of a chess match. They're just feeling each other out. Harrison both. tries to lob. It's batted away by Lookingville. Both pretty content to play in that half-court game. Lookingville, good move underneath. The feed for Kenyon Murray, but they fail to convert, and the Deacons come away. Rogers. That's a little count, and he'll go to the line. Rogers, 6'7 junior from Durham, North Carolina. Six points for him. Good ball movement that time by the Deacons, and Childress is really the one that was the catalyst in starting that. He got it down quickly and hit the corner. The ball came back around to him, and as Rogers was getting down low in the lane, he made a nice pass inside. Sends in Montero Glasper at guard, number 13. They have Kenyon Murray, reserve forward in. They had 10 points in the victory over Northeast Louisiana in the first round. A freshman from Battle Creek, Michigan. Hicks rebounding on the miss by Rogers from the free throw line. Mark Lucas in at guard for Wake, number 25. A junior from Girard, Pennsylvania. Good outside shooter. Joining Chulis in the backcourt. Forest by five. Six points for Owens, who had 22 in the victory in the first round over Tennessee Chattanooga. Wake Forest in a man to man defense. AC Earl's hook missed everything. Turnover by Iowa. 13 38 remaining first half. Iowa by, by five, 16 to 11. It's seven. Rodney Rogers getting the hot hand for Wake Forest. Val Barnes quickly the other one won't go for him. Owens couldn't handle the rebound. Looking Bell. Way Looking Bell. Ten points now for Iowa. Cuts it back to five. Tim Ryan with Ann Myers here at Nashville. Second round action. Southeast region. Number four Iowa. Number five Wake Forest. Travel call, Iowa ball. Well, as soon as I had said that things had kind of slowed down, both teams, all of a sudden, they just turned it up. Dave Odom frantically waving down court. The benches are along the baseline here at Memorial Gymnasium, not on the sideline as usual, and it's a rather unusual basketball arena at Vanderbilt. Wake Forest, 18 to 13. Russ Millard back in the... Iowa lineup, number 52, the freshman from Cedar Rapids. He has the ball. And then Murray kicks it back out. Offensively with Iowa against his zone, if they, as long as they pass the ball and get into those seams, they'll get an open shot. They have had several opportunities, but they've hesitated and then just looked to pass. Al Barnes off to Murray. Childress up high to grab the rebound. Wake Forest has been very patient on offense. Iowa in the zone. They switch, they've got Val Barnes on Childress. Both teams kind of switch some things up on the defense. The guards will stay a man, and then they switch up top if defensively. Down low, they'll stay in the zone. Childress back out to Lucas. Lucas can't get a shot. Lucas had the room, drives, and he's fouled. Okay, 
First foul on Murray. You can see in the rebound department, Wake Forest, the bigger men, so far having the edge. And both teams shooting pretty well, but Wake at 70%. Rodney Rogers off best, eight points, two rebounds for the Demon Deacons. Well, one of the reasons Owens and Rogers are getting their shots is because of the guards. The guards are able to get the ball inside of them. Trelawney Owens has taken uh, one or two baseline shots. On the other hand, Iowa, against the zone of Wake Forest, has not been able to get the ball inside. Luke Ingo has been a bright spot for them outside inside, but AC Earl has touched the ball twice, and he's been able to pass once for two points and then have a hook shot that wasn't even close. Lucas missed, missed the uh, first of two, 18 to 13. These teams are already into the Sweet 16. Indiana having some problems with Xavier before advancing. And Virginia, a winner earlier today. So Lucas missed both. Smith driving into traffic. All tangled up with the big guys, but Iowa controls. Winners, Millar. Well, Iowa is coming off a season-high 25 turnovers against Northeast Louisiana, so you would think that Tom Davis has talked to his team about really taking care of the basketball. Millard pulls his way up. Good job by Russ Millard, the freshman from Cedar Rapids. And the Hawkeyes have to continue to try and get it inside, even if they can draw a foul. Try and get it to their big guys. Charlie Harrison, the transfer from Georgetown. Court. Lucas misses. Good follow. Hicks. That time the Hawkeyes really sagged on defense. They challenged Childress to take that shot, but Iowa has to do a better job blocking out Wake Forest. Wake Forest has really attacked the offensive boards. Deacons by five. Iowa trying to get into their half-court set. Webb in the middle, and he hits from the lane. Jay Webb, 6'8", senior from San Jose. That's a nice pass inside by Winters to the high post. Iowa has not used that high post as of yet, and that was the first time. Webb giving Earl a rest. Wake Forest so far out rebounding Iowa, and they lead the nation in rebounding, the Hawkeyes do, with an 11.3 margin. <laughs> Iowa averages 43 and a half rebounds to Wake Forest's 38 rebounds. This has been kind of passive. I mean, they're concentrating on defense, obviously, but then they need to block out. Rodney Rogers for three. He'll hurt you from everywhere. 11 points. He shot the three this year. He's now 23 of 62. Both teams have really sagged down from their guards' positions to challenge the guards to take their shots. A steal and a foul from behind. It could have been an intentional call there. Winners driven out with a push. Well, Tom Davis definitely wants intentional because of the aggressiveness of the foul. But because Winners was going up to dunk the ball, you can see Hicks coming from behind, and he's. The ball's there, but you see his left hand, he just grabs him and kind of pulls, gives him a shove. And that's where the intention should be fouled. Even though a guy's going for the ball, you've got to look at the aggressiveness of the foul. 23 to 17. You saw the early score in that Oklahoma State game. We understand they have a power problem in Indianapolis in that region. Now, those of you who have been switched to our game, uh, we hope you'll enjoy it while you're with us, but we do intend to take you back to the game you were watching as soon as uh, power can be restored there. So meanwhile, enjoy Iowa and Wake Forest. 8.56 remains here in the first half. Wake up 23 to 18. Winners on the line for Iowa. Make it 23 to 19. 8.56 left to play first half. Final Championship 
on CBS. We're in Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA, so the college bands are contributing their form of music to the city of Nashville this afternoon on a beautiful, bright spring day. Baseball outside, hoops inside. March Madness in Nashville. 43 to 19, Wake Forest on top. Tim Ryan with Ann Myers, 8.50 to go first half. Well, something to look at in this first half so far. AC Earl right there. He finally gets one knocked down and into the game, but he has been held scoreless in this first half and has not been a factor defensively either. Kevin Smith sets up the half court for Iowa. Looking Bill. Back to Kevin Smith. Tried to feed it inside of Barnes and Wake broke it up. Let's see who gets the ball. Well, that's the first time the Hawkeyes have penetrated against that zone. Might have been an inadvertent whistle. Scott Thornley apparently blew the whistle, and he's now consulting with Richie Ballesteros. And this is where it's really hard for the coaches to see Tom Davis standing down on one end. And usually in, in other arenas where the coaches are right there, they can go to the middle of the floor and find out what the official's doing or calling. And that, these coaches are kind of in the fog right now, except Dave Odom, because it's down at their end. And he's well, Odom's got the advantage right now because now, Tom is taking a long walk from the other end of the court. Now, this is Memorial Gymnasium in Vanderbilt. Davis got all the way down to the official scorer's bench where he is, is right now. <laughs> His team's got the ball, but I think he wants to know what's going on. Absolutely. It's a road trip to get there. I think he had to make a plane change. Well, we know Dave Odom got his run in today, and Tom Davis just got his walk in. Well, this was an unusual spot. 14,600 fans crammed in here. We're down below the level of the court. We need periscopes to call a game from here. It was originally built as a concert stage and a basketball floor back in 1960, and they've just added on seating over the years to this present capacity. Well, the coaches just want to know what's going on. That's <laughs> However long they have to walk to find out. <laughs> well, we did not get any kind of positive result here. Uh, well, we're in no position to get information either. No, that's for sure. We'd have to send a carrier pigeon. <laughs> Right now, the score still stands 23 to 19, and it remained Iowa ball, which was the key thing that happened. Smith hits for three. Kevin Smith, the junior from Fort Worth. And we're down to a point now. Iowa trailing by one. Wade looking, Bill, right on the ball. Good aggressive play, trying to get his team up defensively. Twenty-three to twenty-two. Wake Forest with the ball and a one-point lead. And for three, Childress. Five points for Randolph Childress, the sophomore from Clinton, Maryland. Looks a little bit more aggressive coming out, attacking that zone now. The last two, three possessions. Winters cuts it back to a two-point margin. Oklahoma State, two nothing. Our last score from there against Louisville, and the clock is still out. There's a power problem in Indianapolis, and so that game has uh, been held up at least for a time. And we have brought you to this one. Those of you who are watching that game will return you there as soon as they get power restored in Indianapolis. Hicks from outside. Oh! And it's rebounded by the Hawkeyes, James Winters. Kevin Smith off the front iron. Barnes rebounding. For Earl, fall away is good. First basket for A.C. Earl. And we're tied at 26. pressing down the floor on that inbound. Both teams have been pretty patient in the half-court game, but when they've gotten the running going, both teams have taken advantage of that because the defense has not been able to get back and adjust to where the offense is running at them. Delaney Owens, nowhere to go on the baseline. 
And time is called. 6.14 to go. We're tied at 26. First half. No second round action. Southeast region. That's A.C. Earl the first there with a black cap on. And the proud father of A.C. Earl the second who is performing here for Iowa today. You can see both teams shooting very well. Iowa 10 of 16. Wake 11 of 16. And the Hawkeyes losing two players to the flu overnight. Jim Bartles who plays quite a bit. And Kevin Skillett, also a man who's had his minutes over the course of the year. And they like to use a lot of folks out there, so they're missing two from the bench today. Barnes inside for Earl. Well, the one thing you have to give credit to the Hawkeyes for, there's a great move right there. I think a lot of people wanted the travel, but boy, AC Earl's legs are so long, he made a light pivot move, and they're going to cap the basket. AC the first wants a three-pointer on that one. But I was just going to say, the Hawkeyes have done a good job as far as everybody getting involved in the offense because Earl has not scored for them. Wake Forest has done a good job keeping the ball out of his hands, but he makes a nice move inside there. All right, Daddy likes that action. Earl to the line. 28-26, chance for a three-point play. Second foul on Hicks. Lucas rebounding for Wake. Childress, three, no, ah, follow, good, Rogers. And there you talk about the big body as far as screening out. Iowa really has to concentrate on Rogers and Owens, but not only the big body, they're so quick. And it's difficult sometimes when you get a big guy that's slow of foot like an AC Earl cannot screen out somebody as quick as a Rodney Rogers. Earl, nice move inside. commits the foul that time and Earl more aggressively going to the basket now we're tied at 28 also you see the defense for Wake Forest Hicks kind of getting caught behind AC Earl and Iowa doing a much better job getting him the ball and moving the ball around the perimeter which leaves him open and he's a nice little move right there coming back to the left side and, and creating the foul. But AC Earl really has to get involved in this offense. And Iowa, I think, has done a good job as far as kind of taking their time. They didn't force things into it. One more free throw for Earl would make him the second all-time scorer at the University of Iowa. He has the Hawkeyes up by one, 5.17 to go. Two substitutes ready to come in. Glasper for Kevin Smith in the backcourt and they'll wait on the next one Tom Davis said that he has really improved his game as far as rebounding passing this year so a pair by AC Earl and he'll uh, get a rest and he goes to the bench as the second leading all time score at Iowa Jay Webb comes in to replace him the senior from San Jose Number 42. Good effort there. A flying interception by Glasper. And Glasper with a dish for Webb. <laughs> Iowa bench comes alive. 32 to 28. Hawkeyes by four. Monterey Glasper with a great steal. And the defense creates the offense for Iowa. Childress and Lucas, the backcourt for Wake. Banks in the lineup at forward with Owens and Rogers. See Iowa zoning down at the baseline. Owens missing. Last for rebounding. Murray. Thirty-two to thirty-four to twenty-eight. Iowa. Timeout called. Four thirteen to go in the first half. And watch Blaster fly in here and make that 
Interception. Mike and Raft back in New York. Let's take a little walk around the country. First in Tucson. About a minute to go in the first half. A 10-point lead for George Washington in this game, Bill Raftery. Uh, GW putting Southern on the line. Mike, they only have 33 shots. A long way to go to get 93. But bench scoring for GW, very important. Evans with 10 points early on. So we saw the three up the lead to 13. Now, New Mexico State in Cincinnati playing an East Region action at Syracuse. 7.20 on the clock. You see it. That is not an error. That is 34 to 8 Cincinnati. Mike. Give me a team you pick to go to the Final Four. Cincinnati defense, defense, and more defense. New Mexico State, when they don't turn it over, which they've done 11 times, they can't make a bucket against this swarming Cincinnati defense, which looks very much like one of the top defensive teams in the country. Meanwhile, in the first half, 12 minutes to go, first half, Oklahoma State leads by 10. They had to endure a 21-minute delay because of a, was it a phone outage or a power outage, Mike? Well, those folks from Xavier calling a dome. <laughs> <laughs> but well, they're back in action here, Rap. What's the story? Early Louisville went inside, and they were very effective, as you see here. It's a matter of hitting shots. Oklahoma State able to convert. All right, Wake's within three. We'll get uh, to a couple of those sites coming up at halftime. Back to Tim and Ann. 3.45 remaining first half. Iowa leads by 3, 34 to 31. Tim Ryan and Ann Myers here in Nashville. Lucas and Childress, the backcourt for Wake right now. The Banks, Rogers, and Trelawney Owens up front. Iowa has sent Val Barnes back into the backcourt. Senior starter. And Trelawney Owens from behind the backboard. What an angle on that one. Eight points for him, 34 to 33. Well, if he's not underneath the basket getting rebounds, that's his shot on the baseline. A.C. Earl from outside. Eight points for Earl. Earl with Winters. Glasper, Barnes, Millard. the zone defense by the Hawkeyes. Up top, they'll play a man-to-man -man defense. Down on the baseline, they play a zone. And right now, Wake Forest is having a difficult time figuring out whether Iowa is in a man-to-man -man or a zone. Wake turns it over. Three-point Iowa lead. Seven turnovers for Wake Forest in this first half with 2.34 to go. Smith in for Glasper. Glasper really did a good job as far as picking up the defense for the Hawkeyes. And looking, Bill, back in at forward. Number 34, the senior from Fort Dodge, Iowa. Hit two three-pointers to get Iowa off well in this first half. Kenyon Murray back in at forward, number three. Murray with it on the baseline. Run around by Earl off the front of the rim and rebounded by Banks. Well, coming up on Prudential Securities at the half, Jim Nance, Bill Raftery, and Mike Francesa will all be there and we'll also Take a look in live at this contest. Oklahoma State leading Louisville 19 to 11 in the first half. Eddie Sutton, Denny Crum. There's a coaching matchup. Childress to the glass. One point Iowa lead. Murray. 38 to 35. You know, for Wake Forest, they've been very patient on their offense. Childress is the one guy, though, that really has to create things out there. He did on the last possession, but he's the one that is going to get things going as far as the passes, the penetration, or the outside shot. Rodney Rogers deep in the corner, elected not to shoot. Lucas and Childress the backcourt. And now he tries from the corner for three, and that's no good. Rebounded by Banks. Travis Banks. Sophomore from Clinton, North Carolina. One point Iowa lead. 38 seconds left in counting. First half. Both teams have shot the ball well from the floor. Wake Forest shot 63% against Tennessee Chattanooga. 
Interception. Picked off by Banks. Fifteen seconds left. You know, the one thing that's really impressed me in the first half with both these teams in the half-court game, how patient they've been. Rodgers missing, looking Bill, rebounding, and the prayer goes up from Barnes, and we have a tight tilt. Zeros are up. Iowa 38, Wake Forest 37. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship continues after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the second round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by AT&T, the right choice. Pizza Hut, who reminds you that anytime's a great time to stop and smell the pizza. And by Bud Dry, for a beer that's real. Welcome back to Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA. And the bands are playing here at halftime. We're about ready to go with a one-point Iowa lead. Over Wake Forest, Tim Ryan with Ann Myers here at Memorial Gymnasium, Vanderbilt University. And a well-played first half. Both teams shooting well from the floor. It's as tight as we expected. Do you get any feel for a trend here for the second half? Well, nobody's really can set the tempo. I mean, it's been a slow pace, and we've seen a couple bursts. But I tell you, both teams are shooting the ball so well that the big thing that I see is the rebounds. Wake Forest with 13, and Iowa with 7. So there has not been much rebounding because of how well both teams have shot. Tom Davis continues to use his substitutes very well, even though he is missing two of them today with the flu, Jim Bartles and Kevin Skillett. As you can see, both teams shooting well, 65% for Iowa, 64 for Wake Forest. No complaints from the coaches there. And rebounds, uh, an interesting story, because Wake Forest out-rebounding Iowa, the top team in the country in that department. And at the moment, uh, Rodney Rogers with 13 for Wake Forest. And Wade Looking Bill got off to a real good start, but he cooled off. He had 10 of the first 13 Iowa points, hitting two three-pointers at the beginning of the game, hasn't scored in the last 11. He's not a guy they look to to do the scoring for them, so that's been a bonus so far. The, the guys who can score got to crank it up in the second half, but Iowa leads by one. And the one thing you noticed also, Tim, was that AC Earl with eight points had no rebounds. So Wake Forest has done a good job keeping him off the boards. And we'll see if Iowa picks things up, not only defensively in this half, but whether they can hit the boards and be strong. Wake Forest in goal, defending to our right. Iowa and White to our left. Childress, first shot of the second half. Drop. drop for him. Rebounded by Rogers. Another big rebound by Rodney Rogers. And Wake Forest now with 14. Rogers had 26 points and five rebounds in the victory over Tennessee Chattanooga in round one. First foul on Harrison. Sent Barnes to the line for Iowa. Bell Barnes has been very quiet. Only three points in that first half. He really has not looked to shoot the ball. Dave Odom way down at the other end of the court from the action. Barnes hits the first. Here we'll see on the other end, you see how Rodney Rogers uses that big body to really get A.C. Earl out of position to get that rebound. A.C. Earl's working hard to get position, but then he's got to go up and get the ball. One, two, three. Wondering get about it, the it, hair it. on the back of A.C.'s neck. He has the name Street inscribed, literally uh, shaved into his hairline. It's his personal tribute to his late teammate, Chris Street. Well, you look at Iowa, kind of a sympathetic favorite as far as Chris Street dying. And, and he died in the middle of the season. I kind of compare it to like the Hank Gathers back in 1990 with Loyola and Bo Kimball. And they made it to the final eight. And I think, because I had done their games the year before, nobody believed that Paul West could, could have his teams run like they did. They got a shot off every under seven seconds. And nobody in the country believed that they could play like that. And I really think they could have gone to the Final Four if they had not played Las Vegas. Las Vegas ended up winning the national championship that year. But Hank Gathers was such an emotional thing. And that was towards the end of the season when he collapsed and died. Well, these are uh, young men, of course. And uh, there is a lot of emotion involved when you've got college kids, in effect, playing in the NCAA tournament. And the fans and teammates alike remember Chris Street. Rogers fouled by Looking Bill, and Rogers misses the first of his free throw tries. 
Rogers, a 71% shooter from the line. And Wake just a two of six so far. And you know, there's almost also a comparison to him as far as both players, Hank Gathers and Chris Street. They were such charismatic people. Everybody loved them. They were so sweet to, to all their friends and anybody they met on the street. Looking Bill trying to drill it in there to winners who couldn't hold it. They're tied at 40. Turnover goes to Wake Forest. Charlie Harrison, transfer from Georgetown, a junior, working the backcourt. And a foul away from the ball. Winters. James Winters really getting caught behind defensively that time and not be able to make up. He's going to pick up his third personal. And that's a key because Winters is a, is a good defensive player. And he's one of their big rebounders. He just cannot afford to get frustrated. He's going to come out of the game right now with Murray coming into the game. But Winters is a big player for Iowa as far as getting a lot of rebounds. Of course, there haven't been too many rebounds to get because of how well both teams are shooting. And he contributed 12 points in the victory over Northeast Louisiana in round number one. So Kenny Murray comes in for him, the freshman from Battle Creek. They lose a little experience there, but Murray played well in game one. Murray also a big jumper, just like Winters. Lukenville got caught the first time, left his feet, and then was behind defensively, and you think he would have stayed on his feet. Instead, Childress, a smart player, saw Lukenville go up in the air, and he just kind of, he created the bump. And that's that three. Foul. Three on Lukenville. And that's the second jump. Lukenville just should have stayed on the ground. All he had to do was reach, and he knew he made the mistake. We're just underway in the second half, tied at 40, 18 28 to go. And Wake Forest at the line in the gold uniforms. Childress fouled by Wade Lookingville to pick up his third for Iowa. They now have two players in foul trouble. Nine points for Childress and a two point Demon Deacon lead. Kevin Smith driving hard. Iowa looking to pick up the pace a little bit, bringing that ball up quickly. Al Barnes working the baseline, nowhere to go. The crowd thought they were going to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> Sellout crowd, 14,600, and most of them are Kentucky fans. They'll be later against Utah. What a big shot by Kevin Smith. Three points. Iowa by one. Kevin Smith has been very solid at that point position for the Hawkeyes. Harrison for three. Yes. Charlie Harrison, the junior from Washington, D.C. Okay, Iowa slowing it down. Smith and Barnes in the backcourt now. Millard, A.C. Earl, and Murray up front. Ten points for A.C. Earl. This press really has not bothered Wake Forest that much. It's not been an aggressive press. They've been not, Iowa has not been able to trap out of it. And there they get the first trap, but Wake Forest has been very patient. Once they break it, you can see Hicks kind of bring it back out. Rodgers for three, hasn't hit from there, off the front iron. Maybe one of the first times or the few times that Wake Forest has had a poor percentage shot. Good hands by the guards by Wake Forest trying to create some havoc. Good back recovery there. by Smith. Really lost it. He was double teamed by Harrison and Childress. You can see that middle is wide open against that zone. Murray for Barnes. He's got room. Rebounded by Wake. All you see is gold jerseys under there going up to the boards. There are kicks. Hawkeyes have not been able to crack that baseline line of Wake Forest to get the rebound. Harrison from Rogers. Earl rebounds. First rebound of the game for A.C. Earl. Smith. Murray down on the ground. He's getting back up, but big bucket by Smith. 47-45, Hawkeyes. 
Rodgers got away with that. Hookline pass and Childress. Good call by the official. Offensive goaltending. The ball was bouncing way up high. Looked like it was going to go back in. And here Hicks gets the ball. Uh, yeah, hand on it. I think he had that basket. So bad break for Wake there. 15.37 to go. Second half. Iowa by two. There it is. No basket. Go do that. The Mazda MPV. It just feels right. We're talking credit cards with a distinguished panel of experts. You're on the air. When they say I can skip a monthly payment on my Visa card, do they skip a month on the interest? I don't think so. Decatur, Illinois. Yeah, I've got a Visa card, and I think I'm still paying for a meal I ate in 1988. That's called revolving debt. May I suggest the American Express card? No interest, no revolving debt. Reno, you're on the air. Yeah, who's the guy in the metal hat? That's Ed from accounting. Ed, telephone. If there's a problem getting your 800 calls, AT&T guarantees to reroute them within five minutes to another phone, even if it's in your home. Hello, Sam Salmon. In Nome, what's one of the 800 reasons to choose AT&T 800 service, the best in the business? There is a sound you can hear on the new Riviera. It's the sound of German being spoken by those who converge on Ocean Drive. In your town, America, and the world. Bex, the number one imported German beer. counselor and a divorce lawyer share an office and still respect each other? People have fun when they're married. And then when they get caught, they wind up single again. Good advice, Friday, April 2nd. Biggest lead in the game has been Wake Forest by seven. It's down to two, and it could have been a tie ball game again, except for that goaltending call. Derek Hicks just, interference. Got, just got a little anxious that time, but you know that press, what it created was Wake Forest starting to take a quick shot, and I think that's what I would, would like to do is get into a little bit more of a running game and force Wake Forest in an up-tempo game because Wake Forest against that press taking a quick shot. Look and go, another big outside shot would force Wake Forest to run with the Hawkeyes, which is what Iowa likes to do. 13 points for Looking Bill. Went through a scoreless drop there. 11 minutes of the first half after hitting two threes to start. 50-45. Hawkeyes by five. shooting from the outside. He's got two three-pointers in this game. And 12 points on the game for Randolph Childress. <laughs> Winners back in it forward. Turnover. Childress the feed for Rutgers. Crashing the boards with Winters and Webb. And this is going to be a tough call. It's going to be on James Winters instead of Jay Webb. Jay Webb should have gone right in and said, oh, I, it's my foul, my foul, because Winters is going to pick up his fourth personal. It could have gone either way. And if Webb was smart, he would have helped his teammate out. But the starter, Winters, is going to get the foul, but a great break situation for Wake Forest and dishing it off to Rodney Rogers down the middle. Winters goes out with four fouls, and Val Barnes returns for Iowa. And if you're wondering what the ruckus is inside here, it's the arrival of the Utah Utes. Coming into their warm-up uniforms, identifiable in red. And as we told you earlier, the bulk of this crowd is Kentucky Wildcat fans. As many as 12,000, the estimates are. Good job of securing the tickets by the Wildcat fans. <laughs> they only started with 250, and they've got about 12,000. 14.25 remains here in the second half. Iowa, 50 to 49, and Rogers with a chance to tie it up for Wake Forest from the free throw line. 
ahead defensively, pick things up, got a couple rebounds, with some quick shots. And Iowa, if they can get their running game going, but again, take good shot selections. Looking they Bill, trying for three. <laughs> Webb on the rebound, and he's fouled. The ball will not drop for him. And that's the quickest shot that Iowa has had all game. They've come down, Luke Bill has hit three-pointers for the Hawkeyes. He's got three three-pointers in this game. That one, he just comes up short. But an offensive rebound for the Hawkeyes, and Iowa has gotten beat, which is a big surprise, on the boards. Derek Hicks picks up his third. 14-15 to go. Hicks in foul trouble. They don't have a true substitute for him. They would go with Banks, a 6'6 sophomore forward. So we'll be watching that closely. Right now, the teams continue to shoot well. Iowa up to 66%. And uh, utilizing their bench as they do every game, that has been a factor. 52 to 49. Iowa pressing deep now. Well, you saw the uniforms, what team is in what color. Wake Forest is in gold. They were 6-0 and oh at one point. They're 6-2 and two in their gold uniforms. They have four uniforms. Rodgers, 19 points. He had 26 in the first round against Tennessee Chattanooga. But Wake Forest had gone down to Florida State, and they were going to wear their gold uniforms, and Florida, Florida State said, no, no, we got gold. <laughs> and at that point, they'd been 6-2 six, six and two in them. Rodgers picks up the foul. Going for the rebound. Good pick right there. And Luke and Bill trying to get open on the baseline. And you see Murray with the pass. Nice pass inside. A little bit of body right there. But it was a good exchange as far as setting picks down there to open up Murray for that pass. And Murray hits. Solid from the free throw line. Now up by three points. 54 to 51. That press has not bothered Wake Forest in the first half. In the second half, they pick things up a little bit to try and break that press as far as breaking it quickly and then taking a quick shot. And they took a couple four percentage shots. Childress. And with Childress handling the, the things as far as the offense is concerned, things get settled down. Childress. Nine turnovers by Wake Forest. Childress does a good job penetrating to the basket. He thought he got the defensive call as far as the foul was concerned, but they saw the officials a little shuffle of the feet. He averages nearly 20 points a game. And the key performer is a fiery guy out there. Keeps everybody pepped up as well. Well, he can miss his first three, four shots, and he'll go by Dave Odom and say, I'm hot, coach, I'm hot. Play. Robert, 53, and Stephen F. Austin leading Clemson. And Virginia on top of Florida. Number two seed. There are three women's teams that are still in, with, same as the men. Iowa women and men, Vanderbilt men and women, and North Carolina men and women. points for Childress. Iowa by one. Glasper and Barnes in the backcourt now for Iowa. And that's been the big advantage when Iowa has missed him. The De Demon Deacons have been able to get the rebound and kick the ball out whether they get a fast break but at least they can set up in their half court game and that has hurt Iowa. They have not hit the ball. Earl down the pass for Lookingville and he connects. 
Looking Bill, 15 points now. His career high is 18 against Minnesota this year. 56-53 Hawkeye lead. 11.20 to go. Childress for three. We're tied at 56, 17 points for Randolph Childress. Barnes. Barnes! Wake Forest again doing a great job screening out. Iowa just has not been able to get on those offensive boards. Delani Owens came up with that one. Lucas and Childress, the backcourt pair now for Wake. Picks that are knocked away. Good recovery. Last for all over him. Good defense. They're going to call a foul on Glass for reaching in, but defensively, they were able to stop Rodney Rogers from taking that baseline, but Rogers recouping, making a good pass down low. First on Glass for Owens will go to the line. Well, some coaches just can't get enough basketball. That's Eddie Fogler, the men's Vanderbilt coach, Jim Boss the women's coach here at Vandy. Both watching today. Fogler has his team into the Sweet 16 for the men's side. And, of course, uh, the Vandy women won their opening round against California. Well, my math is so bad. I never was good in that subject, but there are six teams. I had three, but Vanderbilt won with the men and women. North Carolina, you got Louisville, Western Kentucky. And Virginia. Uh, Virginia, yep. And Western Kentucky mentioned, yeah. So that's kind of interesting to see how both men and women proceed the rest of the way in the NCAA postseason play. And here it is tied at 56, 10, 26. Remaining in the second half. Harrison back out for Lucas. Lucas and Harrison in the backcourt. Hicks, Owens, and Rodney Rogers. And there's a sample of what that guy can do. So strong. What a touch. Well, they just really pass the ball around, make things open up for him in the middle, and they get a good pass inside to him. Earl responds. That's been the big difference as far as Rodney Rogers getting the ball, Wake Forest being patient on offense. A.C. Earl ties it at 58. 12 points for Earl. Rogers at 21 points and five rebounds. Earl 12 points, only two rebounds at this point. You know, he won't be blank the rest of the way. Trelawney Owens, a four-point lead for Wake. Well, that was a hard shot. There's an offensive rebound by Winters. A great putback, one of the few offensive rebounds that the Hawkeyes have had. And James Winters with four fouls has to stay aggressive. The 6'5 junior is a workhorse underneath. They call him Skywalker. They're not able to hear. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation to try and screen him out, and the ball falls to him, basically, and he gets fouled in good concentration, putting the ball back in. We're tied at 60. Winners goes to the line. One shot. And you talk about A.C. Earl as far as his point production right now. There's a rebound by him. But there's a lot of NBA scouts and general managers in this crowd today to see what kind of center A.C. Earl is. And the arrow, which goes up and down, the V for visitor and the H for home, the light lights up on the home side, and that's Iowa. That's right. <laughs> when those arrows point one way or the other. Earl missing, and it's rebounded by Wake Rodney Rogers. Even at 60. Wake Forest with those second chance points taking advantage. But the game tied. And that's good for three. Childress. 20 points for Randolph Childress over his average. Adrian feels he's been getting hit on the arm on those shots. He's just got to keep taking it back up. Got his own rebound and a good effort there over Owens. Yeah, where's the foul? <laughs> Daddy wants an extra point tack down to that one. Well, you know the officials can't hear that. 63 to 62. Wake Forest is steal by Millard. Smith kicks it back outside. Bank won't drop for Barnes and Rodney. 
Rodgers comes away. Two on two for Childress, and it's tipped away by Barnes. That was the first series of Iowa attacking the offensive boards, even though Wake Forest comes away with it. You see Rodney Rogers coming down with the ball and kind of swings it, doesn't know. Millard is right behind him, but the Hawkeyes cannot take advantage of it. 8-12 to go, one-point Wake Forest lead. Mark Lucas. Owens. Left drop for him. Rebound by Hicks. The Demon Deacon. Childress. Demons on the boards, huh? Yeah, they sure are. Nice turned around by Owens. And as well as both teams shot in the first half, they're missing a little bit more, and Wake Forest is just controlling the boards. Iowa. Number one in the nation, 8 0. Dribbles it off his foot, and they call it to Iowa. But Iowa, the number one team in the nation as far as rebound margin, are getting beat on the boards. Wake Forest leads by three, 7.38 to go. Oh, in attendance today, uh, several of the people from the pros. Don Nelson, head coach, GM of the Golden State Warriors. Mike Dunleavy, coach of the Bucks. Jerry Krause, GM of the Bulls. And they're all looking at the same guy. And he's easy to see out here today, A.C. Earl, the senior. Well, in this game, they're looking at the big guy. In the next game, they're all looking at Jamal Mashburn. And Nelly was telling me earlier that, uh, hey, we got a lottery pick. We got to look for somebody big. 5-62 and make it a one-point lead. Barnes. Wake Forest by one. Hawkeyes continue to press. It's not a real aggressive press. It created the odd trap with it, but Wake Forest has not been bothered too much. Rodgers for Kalani Owens, and then Rodgers breaks for the basket, but it's Murray there for Iowa. Iowa coming out of that timeout was in a man-to-man. -man. Smith. Kevin Smith, the junior from Fort Worth, seven points. Iowa by one. Seesaw battle continues. Largest lead belong to Wake Forest, seven points. Back in the first half at 18-11. And when you can get a defensive rebound, you can get your break going, and that's what happened with Iowa. Kevin Smith just kicked it up, and the defense was not able to get back and find him. Rodgers hasn't hit the long ones today. Earl rebounds. And really not that bad a foul by... Mark Lucas because it stops the break. Second on Lucas. Iowa by a point. Well, more action coming today on CBS coverage of the tournament. UCLA and Michigan, the top seed out west. And Utah and Kentucky right here in Nashville. Kentucky, the top seed in the southeast. <laughs> Iowa by one. Smith and Barnes, the backcourt, looking Bill, Earl, and Murray, the front court. Iowa really looking to get that ball inside to Earl, and then he gets double teamed, and, and they kick it back out. Barnes fouled just as he let the shot go. Third on Lucas, Mark Lucas. Iowa has gone through spurts as far as their offense is concerned. They just kind of pass the ball around the perimeter, not real quick, and then all of a sudden they pick things up and kick it into second or third gear, and the passes are a little quicker, and then they attack the defense a little bit better. Harrison Banks lead. Wake Forest, Hicks returns. He's played a solid game for Wake. In the backcourt, we'll have Childress and Harrison again. Barnes from the line for Iowa. Barnes last year only, this year is only 74% free throw shooter. Last year, he was 86%. He was 21st nationally. And uh, he hurt his foot, though, last year. And so he's had to kind of work himself back in. And he's had a great senior year. He hits for two. Ten points for Barnes. Three-point Iowa lead. 6.09 to go. This one looks like it's going to go right to the wire. Iowa, Iowa trapped in that front court that time off the man-to-man -man rather than the zone, and they really had to hustle back on defense. Charlie Harrison 
Owens to Rogers and Rogers left hands it up. Well, eight-year-old may not have touched Rodney Rogers, but a, what a great bounce pass inside to Rogers. And Rogers, people forget that he's left-handed. 23 and really, points. And he really uses his body well. Here he goes down, gets that pass. And look at him come back around the basket. And he's going to have a chance to go to the line. But A.C. Early is very surprised that that foul was called. But you have to look at the angle, how Rodney Rogers went in. And for most people, they're going to perceive that a foul was called or was made. And they did call it. <laughs> so a chance for a three-point play and a chance to tie. Four points for Rodney Rogers and 26 in the opener here in Nashville against Tennessee Chattanooga. We're tied at 68. 546 to go. Wake Forest pressing down deep. Barnes trapped. Barnes calling a timeout. So with 5.35 to go in the second half, we are tied. The number four and five seeds in the Southeast. You're looking at Tom Davis, coach of Iowa. Tim Ryan with Ann Myers here. We see that Iowa's closed the rebound margin. And both teams continue to shoot well. Iowa 25 of 43, Wake 27 of 43. And we have 5.24 to go tied at 68. Smith and Barnes in the backcourt for Iowa. Burl, looking bill, and Banks. Bell Barnes, big three-pointer. Now with 10 points. And that's the thing that's going to open things up for A.C. Earl as far as the outside shooting here defensively. Iowa knocking the ball away. It goes out of bounds, but they came up with one big steal earlier in that first half. Childress, Rogers, Harrison, Owens, and Hicks. Neither team has gotten rattled when they've gotten down. Wake with their original starting five on. They've made only 13 substitutions to 32 by Iowa. Rogers forcing it up. Foul before the ball went up. Well, looking Bill trying to draw the charge, and a lot of times you can get it on the big guy because they're shoulders have a tendency to look like they're just driving right into you and all Rodney Rogers is doing is making a turn and you could almost make a no call and just let the play go but they end up calling a four a fouls on foul. looking bill and he has to leave you know we mentioned about the substitutions for Iowa and the two players that are out Jim Bartles and Kevin Skillet and Bartles, a three-point shooter for Iowa, averages 16 points and seven rebounds. And they may have missed him a little bit in this game to open up that inside game for the Hawkeyes. And Looking Bell leaves with 15 points. And he's been hitting three-pointers today. Who's not normally their outside shooter. Rogers made the first. Can draw a weight back to within one. And he does. 439 to go. Hawkeyes by one. A.C. Earl. A.C. Earl very frustrated inside, trying to create something for himself and then got caught up in the air instead of kicking it back outside. Give credit to the Wake Forest defense, really making it frustrated for A.C. Earl. Rolani Owens. Wake Forest, the board. That has hurt Iowa in this game. A full miss by Charlie Harrison. And a turnover to Iowa. Reach in foul call against Wake Owens. Picks up his second. Now we're into the penalty here. 
One and one. Murray at the line. 17 foul on Wake Forest. And way at the other end. You know they can really hear Coach Adams. That's Adam. right. And <laughs> <laughs> Murray hits. Murray really has been a nice surprise for the Iowa Hawkeye team out of high school. 6'4", jumping over a 6'4 kid for a dunk. And this guy can really get up in the air. Tom Davis has really been pleased with the way he's played this season. Iowa's 14 of 15 from the free throw line today. And they have a three-point lead. Kevin Smith is replaced by Glasper. Ontario Glasper comes in at guard for Iowa. Another freshman from Albion, Michigan. Kind of a dangerous pass right there. Now remember, we've got more action ahead. UCLA and Michigan, top seed in the West. Kentucky, the top seed in the Southeast from here in Nashville against Utah. All ahead on CBS today as we continue our road to the Final Four. Three-point Iowa lead, 3.26 to go. Rodgers finally gets the long-range bomb. 29 points for Rodney Rodgers. Tied at 73. for Iowa is not to force it inside to A.C. Earl, and then once Earl gets it, he has to make sure he's got a good position for that shot. Iowa with two freshmen on the floor in this crucial situation. Confidence shown by Tom Davis, their coach. And right now, uh, Winters and Lookingville both with four, and Lookingville was up to come back in, and he is in the lineup. He'll inbound it. And those are the two forwards for Iowa. Lookingville not able to get it in, calling a timeout. The 2.59 remains. We're tied at 73, number four and number five in the South. Tim Ryan Ann Myers, Nashville, Vanderbilt University's Memorial Gymnasium, tied at 73, 2.59 to go. And Iowa with just one timeout remaining, having to take that one, unable to inbound the ball. And Barnes hits a big one. Val Barnes, the senior. 75, 73, 15 points for Barnes. He's coming alive. He's coming alive in the second half. All 13 are in the second half. Ten lead changes, seven ties in this game so far. Biggest lead was seven by Wake early on. Driving is Rogers. Tied again. 31 for Rodney Rogers. Turnover, huge. and had it handed to him. Wait for the chance for the lead. Original starters on the floor for Wake Forest. Hicks, Rogers, Owens up front. Childress, Harrison in the backcourt. Well, Winters is guarding Rodney Rogers. There's a timeout by Wake Forest. And Winters with four fouls had a tough time that last possession. Wake Forest takes the timeout. 1.59 to go in Nashville. Each team has one timeout remaining. They're both in the bonus. Tied at 75, 158 to go. Wait for their original starting five. Barnes and Smith in the backcourt for Iowa. Millard, a freshman up front. And Winters and Earl. Childress. Well, that's the one guy you didn't want shooting the shot. Wake Forest knew what was going in. 23 points for Randolph Childress. The sophomore guard from Clinton, Maryland. Iowa just sagged off a little bit too much on Childress. He's been hot from that outside. Smith for Barnes. Barnes, two-pointer off the mark. And the rebounds again. They're going to call a foul on the ward, pushing Rodney Rogers underneath. Bell Barnes missing that shot, but the bread and butter all year long in the rebounds for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And you can see A.C. Earl, Jim, Derek Hicks has done a great job on A.C. Earl as far as keeping him away from the boards all game long. Hicks has only had four points. They were early in the game. But he has worked tremendously hard on the defensive end to keep A.C. Earl away from the boards. Looking down with four fouls on him. 
staying in there, of course, with 119 to go. Rogers missing the first free throw, and Wake Forest rebounds. Rogers with 31 points on the game. Wake I, leads by three. They have the ball. Iowa's got to go into a man-to-man -man pick them up. They've got to force something. They're calling it out now. Winners on Harrison. You got Owens and Smith in a mismatch there. They switch back. Wake Forest didn't see it. Smith now comes out on Harrison. Rogers fouled on the way up. AC Earl shaking his head again. But what happens with a left-handed shooter? Rodney Rogers on that right baseline coming back and his shot is right on the defensive player. So he's got a chance for another one, two shots this time. Second foul on Earl. Shooting foul, Rogers with two. Winters goes out, Murray comes in. The baseline move right there, Earl's got his hands on him, but see, he's gonna come out and Rodney Rogers is the one that jumped right into AC Earl. And Earl's like, I can't believe it. But once a defensive player goes up in the air, majority of the time, the official's going to call him on that defense. Rogers gets the first of two. Four-point lead, Wake Forest. Rogers with 32 points. He's got a career-high 35 against Duke. Oh. 80 to 75. Rogers plays so relaxed, so poised. Looking, Bill. Can't find the range. Two Wake Forest players are there. Owens and Harrison. Well, Looking, Bill knew he had to foul. Childress is just talking back to him. Like, I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> 31 seconds remain with a timeout. 80 to 75, Wake Forest. How about some trivia? Wake Forest took the timeout. There was no foul called on Looking Bill on the play, although it looked like there could have been. And he would have been out of the game had it been called. There is a foul called on Barnes there. Well, both guards going after the ball that time, and Owens just kind of threw it out there for anybody to get. Call a holding foul on Val Barnes is first. Wake Forest has no timeouts remaining. Iowa has one. 31 seconds on the clock. You know, it shows you how tough the Big Ten is. Tom Davis's team lost eight all season long, and seven were in the Big Ten. The only loss outside the Big Ten was against an ACC school, Duke. Childress widens it to six. 24 points for him. He has really played under control this game, really taking charge of the offense. 82 to 75, Wake Forest. Smith for three. Hicks on the rebound for Wake. Fouled by Barnes. Wake Forest, their 11th NCAA appearance, their third straight. Last year lost to Louisville in the first round. And right now, they've got a good chance to move to the Sweet 16. You're happy for Wake Forest, and there's a, a team that will not forget Chris Street and what he has meant to the University of Iowa, the state of Iowa, and to this country. Hicks rattles it around and gets it to go. 82 to 75, five points for Hicks. His performance today, not so much measured uh, in points scored. He has just been an all-around solid performer, defensively particularly. 84 to 75. Smith for three. Front iron, Murray. Murray for three. Yes. Four seconds remain. Six-point lead for Wake Forest. And they'll have the ball when we return. Well, Wake Forest appears
Cougars headed into the Sweet 16. Kentucky and Utah next. Here from Nashville, Wake Forest ball with the lead by six. Iowa desperately pressing, and that's it. So the at-large Demon Deacons from Wake Forest moved at 21 and 8. And into the Sweet 16. And so our Chevrolet players of the game, Wade Lookingville from Iowa, Rodney Rogers from Wake Forest, and Tim Ryan, Brad Myers, I'm Jim Ryan, saying this has been an exclusive presentation of CBS Sports, home of the NCAA Basketball Championship. Let's go to Jim Nance.